Guitar and Excel, C major, A minor, seven note scale as opposed to the five note pentatonic scale position starting on fret number nine, intervals. Get ready and some coffee because we need to approach the vast topic of guitar using a strategy outlined by the old adage. How does one eat an elephant? You start by avoiding the tusks. Then you isolate the behemoth from the pack. Focusing on the lame one, the one that already has a limp lagging behind the rest. It's best to start with the low-hanging fruit, not to mix metaphors here. Isolating the target allows your pack to sneak behind the bewildered beast. At which point you focus all of your attention on one spot, targeting one highly vulnerable, sensitive, and preferably vital body part, like the Achilles heel, the spleen, possibly even the testicles. Yeah, well... Once you see the pain and fear mounting in the eyes of that living mountain of flesh, once you hear the blood-curdling scream of an elephant in terror, ah! you go for the jugular. And then, and then after the giant is down, you eat your fill of elephant flank steaks, wolfing down what you can, while you can, before reluctantly leaving the carcass to the ever-increasing pack of hyenas circling round. And then you gotta permit the pack of hyenas the savage scavengers to finish up eating the elephant before there's enough of them gathered to eat you and your elephant hunting crew too. The hyenas then leaving the bones to be pecked over by carrion. That's how you eat an elephant. That's how you eat an elephant. What, what do you mean? What do you mean, Phil? The way you eat an elephant is one bite at a time? I mean, how, how are you ever going to get one bite if you don't first avoid the tusks, Phil? I mean, it's hard to eat a bite of anything while impaled on elephant tusk. Honestly, like, get, getting elephant eating advice from you is like getting military advice from the Biden White House. I swear, it's unadvisable, to say the least. It's unadvisable. Hey, hey, I know. Maybe we should pay the pack of hyenas to cover our back as we pull a cowardly retreat due to threats from some angry dwarf mongoose moving in on our food. Yeah, trust in the hyenas to cover us. I'm sure that'll go well. One bite at a time. One bite. Yeah. Okay, okay, Scar. Whatever, Phil. Let's just do some guitar. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay. You could just follow along. But if you do have access, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. Quick recap of the project thus far, noting that you don't have to have watched all prior presentations to follow along with this one, but a general overview of the overall project helps to orientate us. So let's go to the first tab so we can get that overall overview. We've been looking at the C major scale and related modes. We started looking at open position, which I would define as frets zero through three, noting that this E represents the low or heavy string, the one closest to the ceiling. Funnest way to map out the notes in open position is to create the chords that are constructed from the scale, starting with the one chord, the C major chord, mapping it out in open position, discussing it in detail. We then went to the four chord because it also has a major chord construction, did the same thing. We then moved to the five chord for the same, back to the two chord, which has a minor chord construction, the three chord, and then the six chord, and then the seventh chord, which has a diminished chord construction, if we were to map out all of those chords in open position, we would see basically all the notes in the C major scale and related mode, which would look something like this, the blue notes in open position. We then wanted to move to the middle of the guitar, not starting with the learning of the chords in that position, but rather with scale positions that we can then tie to the open position chords that we have learned starting on this position which i would call position one or a g-shaped position we discussed it in detail tying it out to each note in the c major uh, scale and related modes we then went to the next position which starts on fret number seven and we saw how it can tie into the prior position this is what i would call position number two or an e-shaped position and then and now we are moving to uh, fret number nine. So we started with this worksheet uh, to look at the next uh, position, which we're going to say is starting on fret number nine. 
and we mapped it out in terms of a pentatonic scale, and then we looked at the full uh, major scale, and now we want to take a look more in depth at uh, intervals. So a quick recap of the color scheme in this area, noting that this whole thing then is our fretboard, the E on top represents the low or heavy string, the one closest to the ceiling. We mapped out, you can imagine on the bottom, all the blue notes first, so all the colored notes you can imagine have blue underneath it. That's all the notes, seven notes in the C major and related modes on the fretboard. And then on top of it, we mapped out the, th the five out of seven notes that are in green that make up the pentatonic scale. So that kind of fits inside of uh, the major scale. That's how I would envision it. Remembering that that pentatonic scale ties in beautifully if we're thinking about the C major scale, as well as its related minor or Aeolian mode. If we're thinking about any other mode, such as the Dorian, for example, then we have to kind of tweak the, our thinking of the pentatonic scale to add the vital notes that are going to be in uh, the other modes. The blue note then is representing not the blues note like in the blues, it's representing these two other notes that are added over and above the five note pentatonic scale to get to our seven note major scale. Now, these red bars here represent position number one. I would call it position number one because it's the most common uh, kind of position we learn from a scale uh, perspective. You can also call it a G-shaped position because you can see that it basically makes a G up here if you're looking at the C major. So it's a C chord, this would be a G-shaped C chord that fits in here, doot doot, like this. We'll talk more about that later when we get to the caged system, remembering that this shape only fits uniquely if you're talking about the five note pentatonic scale or the three note uh, chord, but it will not be uniquely fitting into that shape when you add the seven notes. So you can still name it based on that, but you have to keep be careful there. And then the yellow represents where we started on position number seven, which I would call shape number two. You can call it an E shape because if I look at it in terms of the C, uh, the C major, then it would create an E, which would look like this, an E shaped uh, C, which would look like that. In other words, if I pull this back down here, it would look like that. If I uh, push it up to, to here, it would look like that. You have that shape, which is here, 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 and here. That's our bar chord. And then we move up to position number three, which you can call a D-shaped position, which a lot of people see like with this little D shape here, that's a C chord D shaped, if you're looking at it in terms of C, but to pick up the full thing, you'd have to bar off or pick this one up. So oftentimes you play it uh, something like that, which would be this, this, and this. And so this is where we are right now in this, uh, in this green shape, the position number three, or uh, the D shape. We talked about the pentatonic, we talked about the major scale within it, and doing the fingering of it. And now we want to go into the interval. So I'm going to go to the tab to the right. And this is a worksheet that uh, I put together later. So if you want to learn how to put this worksheet together, we have a course or section on it and uh, that we might do actually later. But I've added down here on this worksheet, the intervals. And we'll talk more about intervals, another course or section. But as we kind of go through the scale, we can learn the scale position and we can try to learn the intervals. And this is something I would advise doing in the morning so that we can try to pick up as much as we can uh, in like a small exercise when our, when our mind is most active. And one of the goals of this is to distinguish between all of the different numbering structures we have to deal with with the guitar. If we can just identify the difference between them, then it'll make the understanding a lot better. In other words, we have a system for the notes. We typically use an alphabetical system, but we can also use a numerical system for the notes, which I argue can have its, its uses, and I think it's well worth doing. So we'll talk about that. And then we're going to have a numbering system in terms of the whole whole half steps that we take in order to construct our scale. And then we have also a, a, a numbering system in terms of 
the notes within a scale, so these are seven notes out of the 12 that we number relative positions to the notes in the scale. We can also see that numbering system this way, Roman numerals, which will give us an added layer of in-depthness because we have the, the uppercase versus the lowercase, uppercase being a major chord construction from that, from that uh, note, the lowercase being a minor chord construction. So that's a nice little shortcut. We also then have intervals that we can think of in terms or relation to the chords that we're constructing. So, so that's another kind of interval that we have to keep separate. So we might be basically looking at the, the second note in the C major, but then when we construct the chord from it, we're thinking of it as the center point, the starting point, and we're thinking about the distance from that point to get to the the one three five you know positions of of that so that's kind of a lot of numbering systems that we have to keep in our mind so if we do like a little exercise to try to keep those as straight as possible then that's that's useful uh, for us to do so let's go back just to get an idea of this to our worksheet over here and uh, remember that that we have then our numbering system this way. Let's go to the OG tab and actually look at this. We know that in our OG tab, we have our alphabet of our musical alphabet, which starts on A, but it doesn't just go A, B, C up to G. We also have to remember these sharps and flats. So I'm gonna re represent the sharps and flats by a small A, B, because we can name it multiple different ways and that's just easy for me to do uh, in Excel. So we have our musical alphabet is A, and then there's an A sharp or a B flat, and then a B, and then a C, C sharp or D flat, and then a D, and then a D sharp or E flat, and then an E, and, and then an F, and then an F sharp or G flat, and then a G, and then a G sharp or A flat, and back to the A. Now, that once you do that a few times, you can get that but it's not like you can sing it like the musical alphabet very easily, especially when you have these two terms for one note. So it's, and it's really difficult to say it backwards. Just trying to say the alphabet backwards, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, takes time to be able to do that. It's a lot easier if you number them. So we just number them one to 12. And if I can code switch between the number and the letter, then in certain instances, I can use some simple math and some simple counting to do this. So I'm just going to say an A is a 1, an A sharp or a B flat. I'm just going to name it as a 2. You can call it either 1, but for the simple numbering system, it's a 2. B is a 3, C is 4, a C sharp or D flat is a 5, a D is a 6, D sharp or E flat is a 7, an E is an 8, an F is a 9, an F sharp or G flat is a 10, a G is an 11, a G sharp or A flat is a 12, and then we're back to the one, which is gonna be an A. So that's why in our fretboard, I have a number and a, a letter. Then we have the numbering system for, for us to basically try to come up with the seven notes out of the 12 notes that we have listed here. How do we do that? Well, we just use the formula I'm not going to get into why we do the formula. It's basically this is going to we're going to take that a priori as that's just the formula for the major scale, which we typically think of as starting point. So if we start on a four, which is a C, we're looking up the C and we apply the formula, which we can say is two, two, one, two, 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 one. This is in terms of steps or half steps or in other words, whole step, which is two notes up, whole step, two notes up half step, one note up, whole step, whole step, whole step, two note, two note, two note up, and then half step, one note up. So if I think about that in terms of simple math, we would say, well, if, if note number four, absolute num note number four is a C, and I go up two notes or two steps, I get to six, and I can code switch and say six is a D, right? And then I go up two, two steps or a whole step, getting to eight, and I code switch from eight is an E. And then I go from eight, one whole, one half step up to nine. Note number nine is an F. And I go up two steps to note number 11. Note number 11 is a G. Going up two steps to note number one, because it goes to 12. There's only 12 notes back to one, is going back to an A. And then up two steps gets us to one, two, three. Three is a B. 
and then a half step brings us back home to the four, which is a C. So this formula, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, is telling us the interval between each note, right? It's telling us the distance between each note. Now we can also think about the distance from the root note in the scale. So, and those distances are labeled down here. I'm labeling it this way. Uh, and you have terms like perfect first, you know, uh, major second, minor second, major third, perfect fourth, and so on and so forth. So that we can, we can then label the distance of, of each note in the scale to its starting point. Uh, and which is a little bit more difficult than you would think because we only have seven out of the 12 notes. <laughs> so, and we're talking about total difference in terms of total notes, 12 note steps or half step distances. So that's, we'll talk about that uh, a little bit as uh, we go here. And so then if I, so if I look at this worksheet, now I'm on the scale overview worksheet and we go down say to here, for example, then our general idea, if we looked at a piano, would be, would be that we, if we started on a C, then we would go up uh, using our whole, whole half, right? So it's whole step from C to D, whole step from D to E, whole, half step from E to F, whole step from F to G, whole step from G to A, whole step from A to B, and half step from B back to C back home. Our goal on the guitar, however, is to not play it like a piano this way, but really to play it in one position. That's why we're cutting the fretboard into basically these five chunks so that we can go down. Now, when we go down, th then the question is, well, if I go from like this D to that E, how far is that in my mind if I was to think of it similar as linearly? Well, it's gonna be a whole step, right? The D to the E, the next one up is an E here, Instead of going up a whole step, if I had my, my finger on this one, where is that, duh, 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 on that D, instead of going up to this E with a whole step to here, I'm going pinky to pointer. So pinky to pointer, uh, D, this D to that E is a whole step. So if we keep that in our mind, then I can, I can apply my formula of whole, whole, half, you know, and so on by, by in one linear or one position, four finger position on the fretboard because I know the distance from here to here. And why is that? Because the distance from each string is basically five notes or you can call it a perfect fourth. In other words, if I was to go, if I had this E and I, I went up one, two, three, four, five, you go up five notes to get to that A, the next string down is an A. So if I get if this was, if I was pointing on this, you don't need to because it's the nut, but if I was fretting that and I went up to my pinky, my pinky would end here, uh, end here, and instead of basically uh, going up to this A here, I'm gonna bring it down to the next open string. That's how it's designed to perfectly fit your hands in one position. So that's the idea. So if we know that, then, and the difference between that is between these two strings. So these two strings have a kink in the tuning, so it's not going to be a, a pinky to pointer position. Instead, you could see this F right here that you can imagine playing like with your ring finger is going back here. So it's, it's the kink in the tuning right there. So it's whole step up from here to here, from here to here. Okay, so that's going to be uh, the general idea. So once we have that down, we can then go and say, let's, let's go through our fingering position here and, uh, and, and, and try to name out as much as we can in our mind to basically understand this whole, this whole system. So what we have here, I'm gonna start on uh, the, the C and I'm gonna go from one to two. Now I'm gonna start on this C out here, which is outside of our position because I wanna start on a C. We're gonna do this from the idea of a C major, but you can do the same thing uh, in relation to other, to every, every mode. So you probably wanna do it with the C major and then the A minor if you wanted to, the next thing would be to do that. And then later on, we'll talk more in depth about doing this kind of exercise for other modes as well. But we'll start here with the C major 
and I'm just gonna I'm gonna finger it just like we did before, but then I'm also gonna try to name as much as I can to try to, to understand uh, as much as I can with one little exercise in terms of kind of like theory. And the goal is to do this enough times so you don't really need the worksheet anymore to do it. Uh, but obviously the worksheet will be helpful uh, at the start. So let's just go through it a few times here. So we're going to say I'm going to start on this C, which is outside of my shape. And I'm going to just say in my mind that this is going to be I'm playing a C major scale and uh, the and the first of the C major scale, which I used to be calling relative position number one, because we're naming it first because it's relative to the scale that we are in, as opposed to this number four, which is an absolute position. Four is a C when I'm talking about the notes. This one is relative to, to this scale position that I'm looking at. So I'm going to say the first instead of one represents this position in terms of this uh, numbering system in relation to the C major scale. So I'm going to say we're going to we're playing the C major scale. I'm going from the first to the second and the first of a major scale clearly has a major chord construction. So you might actually play the major chord or you might just basically say that in your mind. This is a, an E major shaped C major chord. And then I'm going to go from position uh, from the first to the second. So I'm going to uh, finger that and then I'm also going to repeat is a whole step so i'm saying it's a whole step which i can see here with this two because it's going from four uh plus uh two from this two plus two up to uh up to the six right so now we're on the six which is a d so i'm going to say this is going to be i'll say it again this is going to be four plus two goes four five six and i know i know that a six in terms of notes is a D and therefore D is the second of a C so I'm going back to the C uh, major scale and I know that the second of a C major scale has a minor chord construction which you could then play if you want to but I won't play it all the time I'll just say it for now we'll start to play those later but I know it has a minor chord construction and I know the interval of uh, the second now I'm looking at the interval in terms of relative to the scale position C not the the interval in between each position which will be the same this time but will differ later and that's where this terminology comes down here so I know the interval of the second of a C major of any major scale is what we call a major second that's why it's a capital M and the second represents one through seven notes in the scale and this number two up top is the absolute number or distance from the first note in the scale which is a c so and then i can get that in my mind by saying that's a major second so i'm also going to work on my ear to see if i can kind of basically get that uh num that that in my mind so then we're going to go from the here to the to i just put it on the next tab here so now we're going from the second to the third second to the third second to the third so now i'm shifting my finger up to here i'm actually in my position that i want to be looking at this time and i'm going from the second relative position to the second to the third which is a whole step which i can see right here and obviously it's two notes away so that distance is a whole step going from note number six which is a d plus two six seven eight to note number eight and i know that note number eight is an e and therefore E is the third of a C uh, major scale, right? And then I can go to, to this and say, okay, I know that the third of any major scale has a minor chord construction rel uh, that's given to me by that number three right there, that's lowercase. And I know that the third uh, of a major uh, scale has an interval of down here you can see a four note away major third so the the capital M represents the major third and you can see it's actually four notes away not three notes away so it's the third because it's the third uh, in the scale but it's actually four notes away in terms of absolute notes which is different than a minor uh, which is which is different than if I was in a minor scale right okay so it's a four note away and then I can say okay 
And then there's going to be the, the tone the tone of it. So this is a four note away major third, which sounds like this. We're going to sit. And so I try to get that basically in my ear. for, And then I'm going to go to the next one. So we're going to say, okay. So now we're going from the uh, third to the fourth, which I can say here to here. Went from here to here. We're going from that third to this fourth, which is going from note number eight, which is an E, up one this time, half step, to note number nine. Note number nine is an F. So therefore, we know that uh, note number nine is the fourth of a C uh, major scale, and any fourth of a major scale has a major chord construction, which I can see by the capital number four here, and any fourth of a major chord construction has an interval of a five note away, and we can see it's here, it's because it's two notes plus two notes plus one note. I could see it here represented by the five, and we call it a perfect four. That four at the end represents that it's the fourth of the scale. Uh, and we'll get it perfect just as what we have to call it because it's perfect. And you can kind of say the perfects are usually the same between the major and the minor. And it's actually five physical notes away because if I start it here, one, two, three, four, five. And it sounds like this. So we have a five note away, uh, perfect fifth. Okay, so then I'm going to go, let's go to the next one and say, now we're going to go from this uh, fifth to this one. So that's going to be going from the fourth to the fifth here, fourth to the fifth here. So if I see that, we're on, the, we're going from the fourth of a major scale to the fifth of the major scale, which is a whole step, which I can see by this number two right there, going from note number nine to note number 11. Note number 11 is a G, and therefore G is the fifth of a C major scale, and any fifth of a major scale has a major chord construction, which I can see by that number five right there, and any fifth of a major scale has an interval of a seven note away, perfect fifth, which I can see because if I add all these up, We've gone a distance of seven right now. It's the fifth and it's seven notes away. And then I can try to get that in my mind by saying there's my little, that's my power chord. Perfect fifth, seven note away, perfect fifth. All right, and so then we're gonna go, okay, so let's go from the fifth to the sixth, which is the next one. So fifth to the sixth, fifth to the sixth, fifth to the sixth. So now we're going from note number uh, 11 to note number 12 around the horn to one, or you could say 13 minus 12, because there's only 12 notes in the musical alphabet, gets us back to a one, which is an A. And so therefore A is gonna be the sixth of a C major scale, and any sixth of a major scale has a minor chord construction, which I can see by this uh, lower case here, and any sixth of a major scale of a of a major scale has an interval of a nine note away major six. So it's nine total notes away, and that is defined as a major six. That six is representing that it's the six of the scale that we're that we are looking at. And then I could try to get that in my mind. That's what that interval uh, kind of sounds like in terms of the ear. And then I'm going to go, okay, let's go from that to the next one, and so now we're going from the sixth to the seventh. We're going from here, sixth to the seventh, and then sixth to the seventh. So we're starting on the, uh, the note number one, going up then to note number three. We're going a whole step up from note number one to note number two, three. And then I can say, I know that note number three is a B, and therefore B is the seventh of the C major scale and any seventh of a major scale has an interval of a diminished represented by that little dot there. So it's kind of like a minor, but it's going to be a diminished. We'll talk more about uh, the, the chord constructions later, but that's going to be like the funny one. And any seventh of a major scale has an interval of an 11 note away major seventh. So that's what it means. A major seven is 
total distance of 11 notes away, and I can get that in my mind. So you get kind of that dissonancy uh, ring to it, and then we can go from the seventh to the eighth. So then I'm gonna go from note uh, position number uh, s position number uh, s uh, seven in our major scale to uh, position number eight or back home to one, which is a half step going from note number three to note number four, and note number four is a C, and therefore C is the eight or back to the first of the C major scale, and it has a obviously a major chord construction because we're looking at a major scale, and it has an interval which we can call a perfect first or 12 note away perfect first. And that's what the octave sounds like. Then of course we could do the same thing from here. I'll try to do it a little bit faster. And so if I was going from C, I'm going from position one to two, position one to two, position one to two. So I'm going from position one of the C major scale to position two, to position two of the C major scale, which is a whole step going from note number four to note number six. Note number six is a D, and therefore D is the second of a C major scale. Any second of a major scale has a minor chord construction represented by the lowercase here, and any second of a major scale has a two note away major second that sounds like this. Next, we're going from the second to the third, here to here, here to here, here to here. Now, if we put our pinky on that D, we could say we're going from the second of a C major to uh, the third of a C major, which is a whole step, going from note number six up to six, seven, eight. Note number eight is an E, and therefore E is the third of that C uh, major scale. We could see this relationship. That's what a third often looks like, or one way you can play a third. It'll be different between these two strings because of the kink in the tuning. We know that the third of a major or any major scale can make a minor chord construction. Therefore, I could construct from that note an E minor chord, and the third of a major scale has a total distance of four notes away, and we call it a major third and the major third then sounds like this. And then we can go from the third to the fourth and say, we can say, boom, third to the fourth. We're going from here to here, here to here, here to here. So now we're going from the third to the fourth, which is a half step going from note number eight to note number nine. Note number nine is an F and therefore F is the fourth of a C major scale any fourth of a major scale, you could see the relationship. That's gonna be the common relationship whenever you see the interval of uh, the uh, fourth. So any fourth of a major scale has a major chord construction. So I can build an F major chord that will fit into the scale. And we know that any fourth of a, a major uh, chord has an interval of a five note away, perfect fourth. So total distance, five note away, perfect fourth perfect fourth looks like this, or this is one way that you see that construction, except when there's a kink in the tuning, which would be the two strings below it. And so the perfect fourth sounds like this. And then we're gonna go from uh, the fourth to the fifth. So now we're going from here to here, here to here, here to here. So we're gonna go from the fourth, which is gonna be from the fourth to the fifth, going from note number nine to note number 11. Note number 11 is a G, and therefore G is the fifth of a C uh, major scale. Any fifth of a C major scale has a major chord construction, so I could build from that note a G major chord that would fit into the scale. Any fifth of a major scale has a distance or interval from the first of a seven note away, total distance seven notes, perfect fifth. So the perfect fifth then sounds like this, and this is your uh, common shape from that C to that G, which is a power chord looking shape. Sounds like that. And then we're gonna go from the fifth uh, to the sixth. So we're going from the fifth to the sixth. So the fifth to the sixth of a C major scale, dun, dun, which is a whole step going from note number, uh, note number 11 to note number 12 and then back to one, which is an A. So note number one is an A. Notice the distance here looks different. It's not pinky to pointer because of the kink between the tuning here. So now it's basically a ring finger to pointer 
to get that whole step distance. And we know that the A then is going to be the sixth. This A is the sixth of a C uh, major scale. And you can see that distance here or the relationship between those two notes will only hold because of that kink in the tuning. So if this was on the third string from the top and this was on the second from the bottom, it would look like that to get that uh, sixth. And then we know that the sixth of a major scale has a minor chord construction. So I could build an A minor chord that would fit in the scale from that note. And we know that the sixth of a major scale has an interval of a nine note away total distance, which we call a major sixth interval. That sounds like that. And then we're gonna go from the sixth uh, to the seventh. So now we're going from the sixth to the seventh, which is gonna be a whole step going from note number one to three to note number three. Note number three is a B and therefore B is the seventh of a uh, C uh, major scale. And any seventh of a major scale has a diminished chord construction that we can see by the little dot here. So if I build a diminished chord, it would fit within the scale. Any seventh of a, of a major chord construction has a interval distance of 11 total notes away, which we call a major uh, seventh. And that's gonna sound like this. So a lot of tension-y sound. And then we're gonna go from there Finally, back home, going from the seven to the eight. So now we're going from the seventh of a C major to the eighth of the C major, which is going to be a half step, going from note number three to note number four. Note number four is a C, and therefore C is going to be the 12 note away octave of the C uh, major scale, which basically sounds like that. Now we could go in reverse too. So you could keep on doing this going up here. Notice that we're not gonna get back to another C, but you can still map out the differences just like you would play the scale going all the way up and then going all the way back. I won't do it here because I know I'm taking way too long. If you got good at this, what you're trying to do is get your language and everything as tight as possible so that whenever you, you have like a time when your brain is working best, usually like I would think in the morning, you could try to cram as much kind of theory in by just walking through the scale and trying to repeat this stuff in your mind or out loud if possible. And that'll help you and that'll help to, to sink it in your mind so that when you practice like in the evenings and stuff, then it'll start to take plant and the seed will be planted and you can uh, keep going from there. So then of course you could do this backwards though. And I just want to point that out. So if you, if you went uh, from like this going backwards. So now I'm starting on the eight or the one, and, and then I'm going uh, back, to, uh, back to the, the seven. So we're going from the eight to the seven here. So we started here, this is one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now we're here on this C, and if I go backwards, I'm gonna relate everything to this C instead of that C. And you could think of your intervals related to this C, which can be a little bit uh, tricky at first, but then you'll start to get your mind around it. So now I'm going from the one or eight down in a, C, in a major scale to the seventh, going from the eighth to the seventh is a half step in a uh, major scale, going in this case from note number four down to note number three. Note number three is a B and therefore B is the seventh of a C major scale, the seventh of a major scale has a, uh, a diminished chord construction, which you could see by the little dot here. And we know that the seventh of a major scale has a interval out of an 11 note away major seven. So I can see that if I play this way from, from this C to that B, but now I wanna see it this way. So I'm going from this C back down. I'm relating it to, to, to that C. And so then we're gonna go back down from, uh, from the seven to the six. So I'm going from the seven to the six now. So we're going from uh, the seven 
down to the six, which is a whole step going from note number three down to note number one. Note number one is an A, and therefore A is the sixth of the C major uh, scale. And the sixth of a major scale, as I can see with this six right here, because I'm going from the seventh down to the sixth instead of going up. So it's a little wonky on the worksheet to get your mind wrapped around it. But the six has a minor chord construction. So I could build a minor A chord that would fit in the scale. And the six has an interval of a nine note away, uh, a nine note away uh, uh, major six which we could say, okay, it's a nine note away major six. So I can play it from this C here. Whoops. And you can see it this way. But now I'm playing it from the C below it. Versus the top. Right, and then you can keep on going through that way. So now we're going from the six uh, down to the fifth. So going from the six down to the fifth is a whole step going from note number one down to note number 12 so around the horn 12 to 11 so to 11 which is going from one down to 11 note number 11 is a g and therefore g i know is the fifth of the one below it which is a c uh, major chord and any fifth of a major chord has a major chord construction meaning i can build a G major that would fit in the scale, and any sixth of a major chord has an interval of this seven note away uh, perfect fifth, which I can see playing this way now, the one below it. Or if I compare it this way, there's my power chord. So when I play it this way, and you can start to see the inverses of the, of the fourth, perfect fourth versus a perfect fifth. That's kind of why when they said something had to be a perfect fifth, they also had to make like a perfect fourth uh, because of uh, uh, this is a perfect fifth and the per because they're kind of inverse of each other, right? So I won't keep on going through the whole thing. That's going to be the, the general idea. You can go backwards and forwards and try to get that to, to where you can go up and down at least from a C to a C within a short period of time mapping out as much as you can. Once we get that down, we could do the same practice with any uh, mode in here as well. So I'm gonna go back to the, to the prior tab. So, if, so I won't do this, we'll do this more in a future course or section, but you, we talked about in the fingering that you could start on any of these notes and you could do the same thing starting on the second and that would be, I'm playing around the D, but I'm gonna make, make it as though it's the one and think of all the intervals uh, in between when you start from a D going from the two to the two, which basically means that you're playing in a Dorian, right? So that would be like playing in the Dorian hide this mode. And so you could do a similar, a similar kind of routine where you, where you start on the D and you go through. Now, I haven't made another worksheet like this to compare everything for every mode We'll talk more about that later so you get these total distances for each of the modes. But you can kind of count through on the Dorian in a similar process and say, okay, what if I make that the one? Or you can think of it as I'm going to be playing around the two. And what are the intervals as I go from two to two, thinking of it as kind of my root? And obviously the second most common one is the, the, maid, the minor scale. So if I unhide and we look at the minor scale, that's the next one you'd probably want to go to. So I can say, let's hide here. And, and I do have, you could use this little worksheet on the minor, it's just that you're gonna be starting at like uh, the A, and then you can follow the same worksheet, which, which has the same kind of intervals. Now it would be whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step to get back home it's the same worksheet, it's just starting at a different point. If I started on the C, you can see it would be whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step. Uh, if I started on this C, it would be whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Uh, hold on, I don't, I've, I've hid some cells here, so you can't do it perfectly like that, but that's what, <laughs> that's what it would be. But I've got some hidden cells between these two. 
but down here I don't have any hidden cells. So if you copy the same, if you, if if I go to the OG tab, you can see it here. So if you started on the C, it would be whole whole half whole 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 half, bringing you back to C. If you just started on the A, and I did the same pattern, it would it would be whole half whole whole half whole whole. So that's just the difference in the modes, which gets kind of confusing when you start to to mull that over, but you can apply the same kind of, of routine here by looking at the minor and you can think of it as the one or you can think of yourself playing around the sixth and then and then go through basically your intervals because the shape is the same. It's just now that you're going to be starting on the A and think about the differences if that is basically kind of like your central point and come up to a similar routine. So again, we'll talk about doing that more in a future course or section when we just talk about modes in particular.